Today's video is sponsored by MSI and their Katana GF66 powered by the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. Hey guys, Action here. Welcome back to another laptop video. Today we're checking out this gaming laptop from MSI, which is the Katana GF66 that is powered by the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. And it showcase din natin yung ilang mga features ng GPU na yon, such as RTX or also known as ray tracing. Meron ding DLSS, NVIDIA Reflex, and also NVIDIA Broadcast. Tamang tama itong features na to for those who are looking for an upgrade, especially with an MSI gaming laptop. The unit that I have here, the 11UC SKU, is equipped with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 laptop GPU. Intel Core i7 11800H, 8 core CPU with 8GB of DDR4 RAM and 512GB NVMe SSD storage. Which is, in my opinion, pwede na for an entry level high settings gaming laptop. Both the SSD and the RAM are upgradable, so no worries if kulang para sa yon. The Katana GF66 is also equipped with a 15.6 inch 1080p Full HD 144Hz refresh rate display, which ensures battery smooth experience during gameplay, especially with features such as NVIDIA Reflex and DLSS enabled. Both of which we'll talk about shortly after. Medyo hindi nga lang bright yung display niya, but still enough for indoor usage and it also offers great viewing angles despite it being touted only as an IPS level display. There are variants na walang 144Hz so make sure that you look for this when buying as it drastically improves gaming experience. Sa design, we have something meaningful here as the Katana GF66 is actually designed in collaboration with famous Japanese illustrator called Chiyoshi Nagano which is famous for some of his video game works. Both the GF Katana and the GF Sword variants of his laptop were based on the concept of yin and yang, thus the black and white designs. In my opinion, it is actually geared towards a stealthy design, seeing minimal but distinct details and how the MSI Dragon logo on the front was etched, and how the entire design comes out together. There are steam bezels on the display, honeycomb alike or chuba inspired bottom design which aims to increase surface area for better airflow, helping their Cooler Boost 5 thermal solution to work better with its exhaust ports at the back and the intakes at the bottom. Although in my opinion, the fans at max speeds are loud. There's also the hinge which can be tilted up to 180 degrees. Although sa tingin ko matibay naman, medyo wobbly siya when adjusting it, so prone sa wobbling when on your lap or pag nabumunggo yung desk. Other features of the laptop include a red-only backlit keyboard which is actually great to type on with its short 1.7mm key travel na pwede din in on and off if you don't like the red color. Okay din na merong full numpad at least na ma-maximize nila yung available space na maayos as well as intuitive shortcuts for gamers. Sa trackpad, no issues dito. Okay yung size niya for average use and it works fine in tracking. Speakers which are located on both sides are clear and loud but low end or bass sound could be better. As always, this is expected dial sa malit lang ang mga ito. Sa webcam naman, 720p lang but still usable naman for basic video calling. Just give it enough lighting. So testing the uh, webcam or the built-in microphone uh, with this laptop. So let me know guys uh, what you think uh, kung malino ba uh, yung uh, boses ko. Ayan, narinin nyo. So this is the test of the built-in microphone na Katana GF66. There's also Wi-Fi 6 Plus and Bluetooth 5.2 for wireless connectivity. Connectivity ports are decent for the Katana GF66 since meron siyang gigabyte ethernet. Isang HDMI, 1 USB-C 3.2, dalawang USB 3.2, 1 USB 2.0 port, 1 combo 3.5mm charging LED indicator for the battery along with the AC power plug for the 150W power adapter. 
By the way, if you purchase the laptop, there will be a bundled freebie, which is yung Dragon Scroll, and yung special figure, which I think is maganda pang display. So, ito yung guys. Ito yung uh, binabundle nila. Now that we are done with the laptop, let us test naman some games while showcasing you the NVIDIA features this laptop is capable of. Gaya ng RTX, NVIDIA DLSS, NVIDIA Reflex, and NVIDIA Broadcast. First is RTX or Ray Tracing. Although medyo matagal na rin since unang nilibas ni NVIDIA yung RTX feature. Ngayon palang naglalabasan ang mga support for Ray Tracing sa mga games. So I'll be showing you Bright Memory Infinite with RTX off first in high settings. So that, makikita natin yung difference when we switch to RTX on. Take note the IPS then as we switch, since turning on ray tracing can drastically affect FPS numbers. Now with RTX on, as you can see, medyo nagbago yung lighting and reflections, which is the aim of ray tracing but pag titingnan natin yung FPS, ang laki ng ibinaba. You can also see the same yet much better with our second game, Minecraft. We can see significant changes with RTX on, obviously with the light, rays, and effects. Reflections, kita pa rin natin na malaki ang pagbabago sa details. And on the FES count as well. Dito naman papasok si DLSS, which stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, which in my opinion is one of the best features these RTX cards can offer. DLSS is an AI upscaling technology that can increase graphics performance by using RTX cards dedicated tensor cores, which utilizes deep learning algorithms to produce sharp images as well as boosting frame rates. Pwede rin ito gamitin alongside sa ray tracing in order to increase FPS. DLSS usually comes with the four presets, which is yung quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance. If the game supports it, you can go to the graphics settings, then look for the NVIDIA DLSS option, or sa anti-aliasing, then select NVIDIA DLSS. Again, with Bright Memory Infinite, we'll be checking out the DLSS preset on how do they look, as well as the FPS numbers. First, with the RTX turn off and DLSS turn off. Again, we're running the game in high settings and in 1080p resolution. Since this is native rendering, we are seeing good details, although video compression might ruin some. Check also the FPS as well, which is hovering around 90 FPS. Next is with ray tracing set to highest quality and DLSS turn on with preset to quality. As you can see, FPS is still good at around 60 FPS, even when we have the highest ray tracing preset. Changing the DLSS preset to balance increased the FPS to around 69 with almost no changes to the visual quality, which is impressive in my opinion. Then, to DLSS performance preset naman, we have an FPS value hovering around 77 to 78. Although you will now start to see some changes visually, such as the details being softer and hindi ganun ka-sharp ang image quality. Lastly, with the DLSS Ultra Performance preset, which you can use if you want maximum FPS in the game, although at the expense of sharp details. Again, all of these tests are with RTX on. So if for some reason you don't want ray tracing, pero you want the DLSS magic, you can also use it without ray tracing like here in F1 2021, which we played with DLSS on, switched through the quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance presets. And obviously, the FPS values will be much, much higher than native rendering or with RTX on. In my opinion, the image quality of DLSS now is closer to traditional native rendering. So if you have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU and DLSS support, might as well use it para mas maganda ang performance ng game mo. Next feature would be the NVIDIA Reflex. Itong Reflex is actually not exclusive just for RTX cards since it is also available for cards from GeForce GTX 900 series and above. What Reflex does is actually improving system responsiveness by reducing system latency overall. Or for those who are familiar with input lag, it is very much similar. 
Although hindi natin mame-measure ito since wala tayo nung reflex latency analyzer, which is a specific hardware, theoretically it does the work by reducing the latency between your input device, yun yung sa mouse, and your system to your display, yun yung papunta sa monitor. So, mas mabilis mong may gagalaw or makakagawa ng move on a certain situation like aiming and shooting. By removing the so-called render queue between the CPU and the GPU, mas pinapabilis nito yung pag-progress ng frames and ng instructions so that the game can actually respond faster to the user inputs. And although marami pang factors na nakaka sa system latency besides sa CPU and GPU mo, such as yung mga input devices mo mismo. Malaking bagay din yun pagka wala na yung render queue between the CPU and GPU. Since in my own experience, feeling ko mas naging responsive ako when aiming and shooting on my opponents. Ideal ito lalo na sa mga naka-high refresh rate displays. NVIDIA Reflex are supported in many games ngayon gaya ng Valorant, which is one of the many competitive titles that supports it. Enable mo lang yung sa settings sa NVIDIA Reflex by selecting either on or on plus boost option. Same din sa Rainbow Six Siege, pati na rin yung Bright Memory Infinite na tinest natin kanina. In principle, the faster you can respond, mas maganda ang performance mo sa games. So I think NVIDIA Reflex in itself is also a big, helpful feature in gaming while combining it with DLSS for better frame rates as well. Lastly is yung NVIDIA's Broadcast, which is a utility na makakatulong lalo na sa mga streamers. Utilizing the new NVIDIA Encoder or NVENC, which is a dedicated section of the GPU. Mas mabilis makaka-encode ng video streams compared to the CPU encoding, allowing you to run your games much better and without frame drops. It can be easily used on popular streaming software gaya ng OBS, XSplit at iba pa. Meron itong features such as AI noise and echo reduction, virtual background with automatic background removal, auto framing, and even video noise removal, which enhances video quality or your video feed by removing noise. So to wrap this up, I think the MSI Katana GF66 is a good one considering the specs and the features. Being an entry-level gaming laptop when an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 laptop GPU inside, it does make wonders when you start utilizing the features such as DLSS and even RTX when playing games at medium to high settings. There's a few compromises as I mentioned earlier, pero I think it can be rectified or helped by the user naman, so it's not really a deal breaker. Even with its suggested price of 69,995 pesos. Again, if you're looking for something new, or you might want to upgrade to an MSI gaming laptop with GeForce RTX 30 series, the Katana GFS 66 could be your choice. So there you have it guys, ito lang po yung review ko ng uh, MSI gaming laptop Katana GF 66 powered by the Intel Core i7 and GeForce RTX 30 series na laptop GPU. So check out the MSI flagship store on Shopee and Lazada if you want to upgrade this new year. So there you have it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll upload the action. So like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video.